part two the video of the uh, Fox shock install so now I'm going to do the rear shocks um, this is a 1966 so it originally had the shocks mounted forward whereas I think after like I don't know 67 68 they started putting them in the rear like this this was a uh, aftermarket did I mean this probably was put on like 30 years ago because it, it was already on there when I got it so um, and I also got these uh, these shock mounts that are made by Dorman, and they're for a Ford F-150. And I was looking at them online, they look like they might be they'd be a perfect fit. So um, I'm gonna have the shocks going forward, not backwards, because there's not a clearance in the back to get it right. So I was gonna grind off the original shock mount and uh, either take off this original one and move it forward. Or see if I can fit this shock mount on there, but uh, yeah, this was only like about eight bucks on Amazon, so pretty cheap. Um, so yeah, I gotta grind this off and get kind of get some. I need about 26 inches of total shock length to get about five inches of uh, up travel. But it's not like the front. It's totally, the back here is different because the shock is angled, so I don't need as much shock up travel um, because it's not going straight up and down. It's kind of going at an angle as it flexes, so. Um, alright, so yeah, it's probably going to be a bitch to get these off, these old mounts, but... Yeah, I thought of ways I could, if I could cut it somehow and weld a, like a, like a, like a set, like a, like a shock set on there somehow, but I probably still could if I wanted to. Um, but I kind of want to get this up and back. So I'm thinking I want to get it... Somewhere like right in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but somewhere like right up in there. I don't know, maybe... I, once I get this off, it'll fit it better, but this kind of gives me about an inch up. And we'll see. But uh, I can either bolt it on or weld it on, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to get these things cut off and we'll start uh, doing the first fitting here. Alright, cool. That was a total freaking nightmare. It took over an hour to get that thing off. Um, hopefully, I didn't cut too much into the frame there. I put a weld bead down there. It's not all the way through, but it's. You know, obviously it's, it's a weekend spot right there, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna grind the rest of that metal flush. I might throw a bead over it. We'll see. But uh I think it's fine. But uh Yeah, I don't think it's that. It's probably gonna I mean this stuff's not very thick anyway, it's the frame rail there. Alright, freaking out of breath. It's freaking brutal. So yeah, once, once I got the sides cut, I just kind of like, uh, I was hitting it, hitting it back and forth and just kind of, I broke the top weld on the top just by whacking it up and down, you know, weakening the metal, but, all right, cool. You guys can see that, but those are the two notches I was talking about, like right there. I mean, they're in there a little bit deep, so I might put a couple beads over those. Like once I get the thing positioned, then I'll put a couple beads maybe on that just to, Make sure they have some metal in there. Alright, cool. What's up, dude? This was my original thought here. I just clamped in with my uh, little vice grip thing there. Drake, where are you going with that, where that thing, dude? So, I'm gonna measure. Give me a second, man. Get a measurement here. Alright, guys. Actually, I have a new camera order. A better HD camera, better zoom. So, yeah, this one actually has kind of shitty zoom. And it's kind of messed up, but the video, like the screen is all flipped backwards. Hard to describe it. Okay, so here it is. Uh, today's the day. I'm going to uh, remove the back bracket, and as you can see, I did a uh, rear disc conversion. Uh, this caliper was offered to 85 Seville, but I bought the uh, kit off a company called Horsepower, Horsepower Sales, and I've had it for three years. It's worked great, you know. Pretty good. Um, so yeah, one of the issues, like when I when I did that, you know, because the clearance with the shock, uh, I had to put like this extended thing here, and that's it actually came with that, and that's what they recommended doing. But uh, yeah, cool. It's, I'm not gonna have to even deal with this anymore because I'm gonna the shock is gonna be going forward, going this way up here. So so this was originally uh, this was added, actually added to it. Um, this is not stock because the '66 originally was up here and. My other video, as you can see me, I took the brackets off, so. So, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off, too, as well. And that's my, f my fuel lines right there, so. 
to be careful of that, but I'm going to cut these off. And you know, I don't know, I guess I'll figure that out when I get there. But So I'm going to take these shocks off and cut that bracket, back bracket off. And the cool thing is, I didn't do this. This originally the guy, did, whoever had this, well, I, I knew the guy before me. He had actually had it for about 15, 20 years before me. So um, the guy just flipped the metal around. I don't know if you can see that, but so I'm going to flip the metal back down around and I'm gonna try to weld it and fix this hole right here so it doesn't doesn't look like an eyesore there, but... Okay. All right, cool, I guess I'll get started here. Ooh, freaking back hurts. Hey. All right, got the first side off, shock's gone. Yeah, I'm glad I get rid of all those uh, like converter brackets and all that crap, extra crap that was right there. It was just so, so much shit bolted to the very bottom here to uh, add a rear shock. So now I just have that front mount here in the front, and if you guys are wondering, I have, uh, these are Deaver 11-pack uh, springs, and uh, I have the, uh, what's that called, the, uh, it's the angle bracket to kind of tilt the axle back up, so it's actually even back there, or at least it's tilted up in the right direction, there's no, uh, I guess like a, kind of, I guess, leverage point or something, but, so I guess another question I have is, uh, I loop these up here in the back, the, sh the rear shackles. Um, unique Bronco people know. Um, right now I have them totally torqued down with my torque wrench and I guess I was reading that these sh should be actually just hand tight so they can flex. So I'm thinking maybe I have these tight and they don't flex enough. So what I might do is might get some new bolts, some new like Loctite bolts, nuts here. And uh, that way they can actually just, just kind, of, kind of have them like hand tight so they can flex back and forth without... Yeah, I don't know the whole deal. I mean, I, I guess there's mixed... I, I have some people say to torque it down with your torque wrench or... My torque wrench for your impact, and some people just say make it like hand tight so they can uh, flex. So, so kind of wondering about that. But all right, now I can actually uh, start fitting the Fox shock on here and get some clearance. But before that, I have to cut this off because I don't want this here anymore. So, all right, cool. So I'm able to break through it a little bit here. Um, I, did, I, I couldn't get the whole thing off because I have to take the whole freaking cab off or tank to get it off there. But um, yeah, I'd use a different bunch of different cutoff wheels here, you know, die grinders and freaking that thing right there. But saws off. But all right, so I'm just gonna wiggle this back and forth. I had to cut that big shaft off up in the front there. And actually, I might use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna compare this with the other one I got and see if I can uh, use this one right here. So this one comes out about an inch more. I'll compare the two once I get this thing off. So cool. So yeah, now I can just probably wiggle this back and forth to get it off. So break it. All right. Yeah, that took me about an hour, man. It's freaking hard, so. All right. This is a, kind of an odd design for a shock mount. Um, I don't know if that's a stock shock mount or it's like that, or just like an aftermarket one, but yeah, that thick shaft that kind of comes over and hangs over the thing just seems kind of like an odd to me, I guess. Never seen another shock mount like that, so I'm gonna use my uh, grinder and just clean the rest of this up and uh, try to get it as smooth as possible and then paint over it. Cool. All right, I guess we'll, uh, See, I mean, this piece, this piece of metal that where the shock used to be has been bent up for 20 years. So I'm gonna get my screwdriver behind there. Get it going. Wow. Wow. Well, it's gonna have, I'm gonna have to do this off camera, but I'll, I'm gonna bend it back and fold it back down, and hopefully it looks semi-normal. And I'll see if I can weld the seams, but all right. What kind of paint I'm using on the body? I use a it's called Hammered by Rust Oleum, and it kind of gives it like a textured look, but it's supposed to uh, prevent rust. So pretty much all my underside, I, I use this uh, this rust cap. Well, it's called Hammered or Rust Cap, one or the other. Um, yeah, it kind of gives it like a textured finish, so it kind of hides the imperfections. So once I do a couple coats over this thing, you're, it's gonna be hard to even see like the difference where it was uh, rounded or the metal's ground. Alright, first time I've ever seen that metal before. It was like that folded back before I even got the truck, so it's kind of cool. So at least I'm not going to have a gap there, you know, where the shock mount used to be. So I'm just going to use my little MIG welder, throw some little beads on here, and then kind of grind it and use my. I think I, this stuff I use like that uh, rubber, a rubberized undercoating. And I'm just going to spray a little bit of patch there, and hopefully that'll look pretty good. We'll see. I don't know. Alright. I guess here are the two shock mounts that I have. I, this is the one that I bought the. Uh, What's it called? Uh, Dorman. 
it's for like a like a 90s uh, truck, like an F100, F250, at Fords. It's the original Bronco. I do actually like how this goes out about an inch further this way, uh, out. Um, with this one, I, when I was looking at the clearance would be pretty tight with the back of the leaf spring, the shock coming forward. So I might reuse this one or just weld it and try to get as thick of a weld on there as possible, you know. So I don't think it's going to come on I me. Mean, as long as I get a good bead, a good penetration, then I think it would be fine. But uh, I might do some extra welding here to make it a little bit tougher, you know. But uh, all right, I guess i got to see here. i got to kind of fit them here. So I, I measured it. It's going to probably be, yeah, if I use this shock here, it would be a uh, shock mount. It would be like that. I could bring it up about an inch. That's cool. So I wouldn't have to go so forward. I could bring this up higher, probably up to about there. That way I have a little bit of shock clearance right there, maybe. Or I could go this one. I don't like how this one kind of tilts down though, so I maybe have to modify that. You know, modify the bracket to... Don't know. Well, I'm gonna keep on playing with it. Yeah, I'm gonna get the probably I'm gonna mount the shock probably and kind of see where it where it would sit. But uh, yeah, this one kind of curves down. It's kind of odd. See, it's kind of at an angle down. So I may have to cut, make a couple cuts right in here, fold it back, and then weld it possibly. But these were only eight bucks each, so that's super cheap. Um, but yeah, because this one doesn't come out as far. It would be more more of a clearance issue, I would think. But uh, right, I'm gonna keep on comparing it, and I'll have to make a decision by tomorrow. All right, cool. I made a little mark here. Um, I think I'm gonna use original shock tower. It just would be a better fit, better clearance for this thing. And I'll ship those other ones back on uh, to Amazon or whatever. So I'm gonna clean this up, get all the metal clean, and I mean, I'll have enough clearance, you know, with the. Uh, shock mount right down there and it's gonna go straight up and I mean that should be more than I think strong enough to I'm gonna put some pretty thick welds on this thing too so if you can see that all right what's up so have my uh, did a little MIG welding on that side it's uh, just trying to fill those little holes up where it's uh, where that thing the shock used to be yeah, I fold the uh, metal down here and try to get it going, but um, I use this MIG welder right here, the uh, this like 135 amp uh, link in here, but uh, this side I'm already done on. It's not going to look like perfect, but I mean, the metal is kind of folded, so it's probably never going to look perfect. I mean, I could probably try pounding it a little bit, but I use this uh, rubberized uh, undercoating and uh, I'm going to spray it real quick, but uh, give me a second. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but I'll try to get it on camera. It's like it's a, it's really texture, which is kind of cool. So it's gonna hopefully hide a lot of imperfections in that metal there. Probably come over this with a couple of coats. You know, so you can totally see how it's gonna hide that. It's gonna look like the rest of the stuff. So yeah, I might go one more coat to fill a hole in there, and uh, so I'm gonna do the other side. And yeah, you're probably not gonna even notice that there was metal there, or it was, it was uh, cut out. So. Yeah, it's the nice thing about that textured uh, rubberized stuff. Hides a lot of the imperfections. All right, cool. That shock mount uh, down there. Or at least kind of mount in there. I'm still trying to measure. Uh, one about 25, cle 25 clearance, you know, totally extended. Should give me about um, five inches of up travel, but I don't think I even need five inches. I mean, because it's not at a it's not 90 it's not straight up and down it's more like a 45 degree angle here so between here and here I if you can see that it's about 25 inches somewhere around there and you know as so i'm actually looking at this is a straight line so the shock could be mounted in the same path as this measuring tape so it looks like i'd have clearance here with the uh leaf spring so so yeah i'm gonna tack this up and get it going and uh, hope I don't have any problems. It sucks because it's freaking actually kind of a nightmare grinding this stuff off. So, all right, cool. So uh, that's the next step. I'm gonna get it going and get the shock shock in there. So.
So hopefully I should have about five, around five of uh, up travel. So cool. All about a 6013 rod. Um, so far I'm still kind of learning welding, at least stick welding, but I uh, had the best luck with the, uh, or it's a, what's it called, 6013. Yes, 6013. Um, if you're wondering why I have the shock mounted or tilted that way, kind of like at an angle, it's because the shock is going to be pushing this way. Coming, the shock will be coming up. You can see my hand. It's going to be coming up this way. So I want to give it, you know, having it that direction will give it even more strength pulling that way. So that's why it's sort of uh, angled down. So, all right, all right, cool. Huh. Let's double check everything before I weld. All right, cool. Pretty weld here, but. Um, I mean, I was, it's, it was hard to reach on this side. I couldn't get a good viewing angle, but this side, I think it looks all right. Let's take a look at it real quick. But yeah, it's not good well, man. It's maybe just one which there's penetration in there. Looks like it's pretty good. I'll hit it with a hammer a couple times just to make sure that it's. Then I'm gonna spray this with my rust cap paint. Yeah, still freaking hot. I just got done welding a second ago, so. Well, yeah, this side sucks, but I just, I just couldn't see it. You know, I, I was at a weird angle. I couldn't really get a 100% view of it. So it's just kind of like almost doing it blind. But this side, it looks pretty good. That was 6013. So from where I read, 6013 is kind of like a, it's not, it's good for semi-dirty metal, I guess. You know, like where the 6011 is like good for like dirty metal, where this was sort of clean. Whereas I think that with the 7014, I think, is the other stuff that's designed for really clean metal. It's, t it's a tighter bead, but... You know, it's uh, harder to weld, you know what I mean? I mean, you, you have to be a better welder, so I, I don't know, I'm still learning, so. All right, I think that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good penetration, so. All right, so I'm gonna throw some paint on there and get that shock mounted and see what's up. All right, cool. Here, I uh, got some paint on that thing. The cool thing about that paint, that rust cap, is it really fills in some of the holes, so it doesn't make it look so bad, but. All right, so I have the shock here. I'm fit it in there. So I actually put the uh, I took out those the bearings that were in there. And I put in uh, some of the uh, polyurethane uh, bushings right there. And this lower one needs an insert because it's going to be uh, that size bolt. I think it's no five eight. That's half inch, I think. Okay, I can't remember. But the uh, that one doesn't actually have an insert. It's a little bit bigger. It's five eight, I think, up here. So. All right, get this going. So hopefully I'll be done in a little bit. All right, cool. Difficult right there. So um, hopefully when I get this back in there, it's gonna squeeze these two pieces of metal together. But I totally open them up to just to get this hard polyurethane bushing in there. So yeah, I used uh, this thing here. I, had, I was pounding, pounding it down there with a hammer to open it up. But uh, all right, cool. Guys, there it is. Up. And uh, a second, measuring tape. Check the up travel here. Well, wow, up travel is almost six inches. So, I mean, that's it's different from the front shocks because the front shocks like straight up and down, where this is a 45 degree angle. So, I don't know how to calculate that, but I'm probably gonna need to definitely get some more new bump stops. But I don't know how to calculate that because it might be fine because it's not six inches up travel at a 45 degree angle is not. You know, at a 90 degree angle here, so um, not 90. I mean, it seems like straight up and down. So I don't know what the compression is. But it might just be half of that. Yeah, you know, I mean, on a, on a 45 degree angle. So don't really know. I'm sure, some shock guys will know. The Bronco dudes. So let me give you a recap of what I did again. So I removed the uh, the aftermarket ones. That were, this originally was a 1966, and it actually had the front brackets in the front with the eye the eyelet shocks. I'm not sure if they're called eyelid, but the the ones were the, the the stem shocks, and then I took this aftermarket bracket that used to be in the back. You can see where I cut it off there, moved it forward, and then I fixed the hole that was here where the shock used to be. Like originally, this thing didn't have a body lift, and I put a one-inch body lift, so that brought it up a little bit. But all right, so those are my disc brakes. Brake pads look fine. So. Yeah, that's a Fox shock, so hopefully this improves the ride quality a little bit. 
So maybe one of you guys can tell me about the shackles back here. Maybe uh, let me know if I should uh, keep these torqued down. I mean, because I use an impact to tighten these down, you know, or they should just be kind of like hand tightened, you know, just a little bit with like some uh, lock nuts. That way they can actually flex back and forth. So I'm not really sure how to percent with that, but let me know what you guys think. Cool. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, I'm stoked. The shock, fox shocks on the back. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll give you one more shot with a tire on, and that's that's the end of the video. So cool. So they are. Um, yeah, what's funny is uh, uh, originally had when this I got this Bronco, it actually had four uh, or two Rancho per tire, and this, it was so freaking stiff. I had the end of the stock springs in it, and dude, it was brutal. So I originally got it lifted, and I kept the the, the Ranchos on there. And a couple weekends ago, I did the uh, Fox conversion, but once once I did the front, and I still had the Ranchos in the back, it totally amplified how bad the Ranchos were in the back. Yeah, like it went from the this front was soft and the and the rear was uh, stiff. So hopefully this is gonna be more evened out now and do a quick little walk around and oh fuck, I almost went down. Alright. So there it is. I don't know if you can see that behind my plants, but there it is. And there the fronts again. But uh all right, cool. Let me have you any questions. Yep, cool. That didn't turn out that bad. You know, you can't even really hardly tell. Cool. Guys, um, just took this thing for a drive. Uh, I guess it's not the end of the video, but I guess I'm so excited that uh, I wanted to make this video, or at least add to it. Um, wow, what a difference. Crazy. Um, I did some, I've done some pretty major upgrades to this Bronc over the years. You know, I've done a 351, AOD, fuel injection, uh, four-wheel disc brakes, you know, hydro boost, and uh, now these Fox shocks. And uh, doing this, this shock conversion probably ranks up there uh, as probably one of the best things I've ever done to this Bronco. You know, along with the disc brakes, I mean, they're pretty much up there, man. It's incredible difference. I mean, I, I suffered with this Bronco you know, with, with a stiff ride for 20 years. And, uh, I mean, just with those different shocks, I mean, it feels like a completely different car now. I mean, it feels like a, it's like a modern car now. It's so soft and it's freaking incredible. So yeah, I'm just totally crazy excited right now. Just took it for a drive and just can't believe it. It actually feels so soft and comfortable to drive this thing now. Like you don't you don't feel every single bump on the street. It's, it's crazy. So yeah, if you can afford to do it, man, I would definitely do it. It's probably uh, ranks up there with the disc brake conversion. So awesome, 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 cool.